Hello everyone, thank you for joining us today for our Field to Finish in AutoCAD Civil 3D 2016. My name is Lawrence Vaughn, Operations and Marketing Lead at CAD1. I'm also joined with Warren Geisler, he's our Training Center Manager and he'll be our host today. Good morning everybody. Just to let everybody know that this session is being recorded and it will be available on our website. I will show that to you during this session of where you can get back to it. But if you just come up to our website at cad-1.com, you'll be able to find all of our recorded sessions. And again, before we get started, I do want to bring up some information about promotions, things that are going on with Autodesk, changes in the market. Lawrence, would you like to start with that? A lot of upcoming changes coming up on the Autodesk side. As most of you know, uh, the licenses uh, will be all term-based next year. So all those folks that are buying new license next year or uh, hiring or just starting a new business, all the licenses being purchased next year uh, at the end of January and then for suites at the end of July will be all term-based licenses. Uh, any questions about that, feel free to give us a call. There is um, uh, any, any uh, perpetual license needs, you will want to do that before next year. So feel free to give us a call. You can talk with anyone here in our office to get a, a brief, uh, some more information about the current promotions going on in the term licenses and some of the changes. You can go to our promotions tab, as you see in the top right on our website, and it will take you to that uh, detailed information. Oh, man, I hate it when that happens. Don't you hate that when that happens? Okay, just kidding. So today, I have to throw out at least one joke in all of these. So today, what are we here for? We're here to talk about Civil 3D, working with surveying, and specifically, field to finish. So what is field to finish? And I pulled this off the Autodesk website. It's a great little uh, definition for us. It's basically just a regular term, general term, used to describe the surveying process. So, so what surveying process are we talking about? We're talking about utilizing your hardware, your data collection hardware in the field a specific way using your data collection a specific way, and then coming into the office and using your software, specifically Civil 3D, in a certain way in order to download all of your survey information, input that into a Civil 3D file, have the program do automated symbology, automated layers, automated line work, and the line work on proper layers. All of that's automated, so it's meant to do your data input and reduction very, very quickly and automatically so that when you get done inputting all of your information, you should have pretty much a finished existing plan, what we would uh, commonly call an ALTA or what you see up there on the screen. All of that, for the most part, should be done. Now, there may be a little bit of cleanup required, a very minor cleanup depending on how you did your surveying, and I'm going to show you some of that. You may need to add some annotation, but that's the kind of stuff that can be done in the office at a later time. What I'm talking about is, an, is the whole process of having your witnesses in the field, having your surveyors be able to come in at the end of the day and within 15 minutes be able to spit out a plan similar to what you're seeing here. So it's not a very time-consuming thing. And the main reason that I stress this, and I've worked in companies that have done this and been very successful at this, the main reason I always stress field to finish and why it's so important is it's a huge time saver, number one. It, if you've got all your standards and settings taken care of, it makes sure that all of your standards are adhered to, all of your line work goes on the appropriate layers, all of your symbology comes in the way that it's supposed to. And then lastly, and most importantly, and this is the thing that I really stress to all engineers and surveyors out there doing this or thinking about doing this, is that the people who are doing the input and reduction, the people who are building this plan and handing it off to anybody else in the office, those people should be your witnesses in the field. Those people should be your field crew. The reason for that is, is that they were the ones who actually went out there and took a look at this and did the shooting. So they would be able to identify very quickly if there was a busted shot, if there's a problem in the surface or anything else. With just a little bit of effort at the end of the day, when they're doing their, in, uh, their um, uh, input, from the data collector into the survey or into the civil 3D survey system, they should be able to identify this in just a matter of minutes. So what is going to be required and what are we talking about here? Well, realistically, no changes 
in the actual data collection. And that means for the field crews. A lot of people, when they think about this, they're thinking, oh, man, I'm going to have to change the way that I go out and do my survey. And, and the answer to that really is not. You, you do not have to do any anything different. Any You don't have to change your data collection practices. If you do figure chasing or feature chasing, you can still do that. If you do a random Zorro method and go around and collect data different ways and shoot different things all over the place, you can still do that. The only change, in order to make this work really well, the only change might be extra attributes that you're collecting for your information. These attributes can be collected in the field. Virtually every data collector out there that's being sold right now has the screen on it. You're able to plug in your field codes and you're able with each field code to have the program bring up an enhanced list of attributes. As an example, if I go and pick a tree out of the list, I'll get an enhanced list of attributes for the tree to talk about maybe the, the caliper size, the drip line, the height of the tree, that kind of thing. You would need to add that information into your data collectors and make sure that the surveyor was collecting it. Some of the other codes can be collected in the field, as you're going to see here, and some of them don't necessarily need to be collected in the field. It can be added on at a later time. So what else is going to be required? Well, you're going to be using the software, and by the software I mean Civil Autodesk Civil 3D software, to generate all your line work and symbology. That's going to mean a little bit of extra setup for you. Now before we run down this rabbit trail too far. I'm going to ask the people who are watching live today a couple of questions just so we've got an idea of what you're doing and why you're here today. So the first question that I'm going to send out for everybody is what version of AutoCAD are you using? So the current version is 2016 and earlier versions 2015, 2014. Now the good news is, is that if you're using a much earlier version such as 2013 or something along those lines then everything that I'm about to show you is still good. If you're using a much, much earlier version, like a 2010, 2009, eh, maybe not. We'd have to take a look at, at maybe upgrading your software. And if you're not using Civil 3D, if you're using something like LAN Desktop, or Soft Desk, or DCA, while they did have this system in place, it's going to be quite a bit different, as you're going to see here. All right. Just in case you're wondering, I'll share it with you. And it looks like just about everybody is using one of the latest couple of versions, which is good news. I like seeing that uh, many of you are using 2016. It's been out long enough. We've got some service packs. We've seen some of the, the cool things that 2016 has to offer, so it's good to see that uh, several of you are on that. All right, so the next question. This is the important one. And it's an easy one, yes or no. Are you currently actually importing survey data? Now, I'm not asking if you're using the full field to finish system. Are you currently using survey data? Are you currently bringing that into your workflow? I guess along with this, I probably should have asked the question of, if you're not currently bringing in survey data, would you like to? But that would seem a little bit redundant, don't you think, Lawrence? <laughs> I agree. Yeah, that, <laughs> if, if you're here, then obviously you want to bring it into your workflow because you're here to learn about this. Okay, I'll share that one about what I expected, uh, about 50-50. So those of you who are not currently bringing in survey data, you're going to see uh, uh, some great reasons why you're going to want to bring in survey data. This is something that's at the bottom of my heart right here is, for those of you who are bringing in your survey data, if you're using some kind of field to finish, who does it? And you must be using field to finish. You're bringing in your survey points. Somebody's got to connect the dots. Somebody's got to draw it up. So uh, is your field crew doing the field to finish? I'm not going to ask the other questions of, you know, are they doing the, the manual connect the dots? I'm going to show you how people are currently doing that, connect the dots. We're going to get away from that. Or are you using some type of automated system? I also know that some of the other systems, like some of the Trimble um, Business Center, the PBC, they might have some uh, great tools in there for doing your automated line work as well. But I'm going to show you the stuff that's inside of uh, Civil 3D. I'm going to go ahead and close the poll about what I expected, about 50-50 field crew and office staff. So, so you know what field to finish is. So the next question, and by the way, a very quick aside, no, this is not going to be all PowerPoint. I'm going to get into the software and start demonstrating this in just a moment. But the field to finish, why do we actually need it? Well, some real important reasons for those of you out there that are not using it right now who have to sell this to people in your office, maybe an owner or a principal in your office, 
or looking at maybe enhancing your workflow. Number one is time. When you bring in your survey points, as you're going to see, they just come in as a collection of points. If you don't have something that's automatically going to connect the dots, somebody in your office is going to have to connect the dots for you. That means drafting time. That's a wasted amount of time while somebody's trying to draw it up because they're having to manually draw it. Basically, it's turning AutoCAD back into the board, back into manual drafting where they're just drawing and connecting the dots. The other important thing is, is that the person typically connecting the dots is going to be somebody in your office, an office staff. They've never been out to this particular site. They may have had experience of doing field data collection, but here's the important thing. It doesn't matter what kind of experience they've had doing data collection. They weren't the ones actually out in the site. They weren't the ones taking a look at this. They don't know if there was really a hole there. They don't know if the hydrant really is out in the middle of the street or something. They, don't, they weren't the witnesses in the field. So when you're doing this and you're automating this process, one of the things that you're having your crews do is you're having the field crews actually do the input and have the program do the drawing. That way they get to see if there are any errors. They get to correct the errors very quickly because they saw what was going on in the field. The process for cor correcting the errors is very easy and straightforward. They've already got their point file. It's just a matter of getting in there and making some, some easy edits and taking a look at what's actually going on. Doing this allows the field crew to make sure, do your QAQC of making sure that when they do a handoff to somebody in the office, an engineer uh, for doing design or a survey tech for doing an Alta or a Plat, when they hand it off, it's as accurate as possible. There's no back and forth go, uh, from the office to the field crew because a lot of times what I've seen is that the field crew just passes off a point file some in the office starts working and the field crew goes back out the next day into the, into the field to do some surveying. Well, if the office crew has an issue, has a question, they're calling them, they're trying to send them an email, they're texting them, they're trying to figure out what's going on, field crew doesn't know what's going on and they're going back and forth. There's just a lot of wasted time. Even if you've got some kind of automated field system, it's still a lot of wasted time. Now, the big thing is, is that that final output that I was just mentioning, by the time this whole thing gets done, by the time the surveyor passes it off, somebody in the office should be able to use this and take it to the next step without having to worry about it and worry about the quality of the data and doing QAQC. It, they should have a surface. They should have the line work. They should have all the layers done. Everything for an existing ALTA should be done so that they could just clean it up, put a title block on there, and print it for an ALTA or plat or they give it over to the engineer, the engineering tech, who's able to start doing design work right off of the existing conditions. So what is this all going to take? What is it going to cost me? What's it going to take to get this process done? Well, you've already got the software. That's the good news. But in order to make this work, everybody, and this comes from me being an old CAD manager, in order to make this work, you've got to have the proper civil 3D template set up. Now, that means more than just layers and textiles, although those are very, very important. It's going to mean a lot more than that. It's going to mean description keys, and those description keys have to be shared with the guys who are going out in the field. Those codes and the attributes have to be agreed on between the field crew and the office crew. You have to go back and forth. You've got to have your figure prefix library already preset. You've got to have your survey control, your survey database settings already preset. So a lot of the stuff in Civil 3D has to already be preset in order for this to work. Some of it you can adopt right out of the box, such as the line work um, connectivity codes, and you can change those if you want to. The big thing is, is that you're going to need to do a lot of work. In Civil 3D, more than any other program, I think, you have to spend a lot of upfront time setting up your standards, your settings, and your styles. That's going to take some effort on your part. The good news is, is that it's, it's like any template. Once it's done, you never have to mess with it again. You could just keep carrying that template forward year after year, carrying your figure prefix database forward year after year. You don't have to worry about this ever again. And you've already got one of those. I know everybody who's listening in, who's watching this video in the future, you've already got one of those templates set up. I know everybody does, right? So other things that you're going to need to pay attention to, so, and this is mostly for the, I would call them the engineering techs or the CAD managers who've not been exposed to a lot of survey things that they need to worry about. 
So specifically, these are the things you're going to need to worry about for field to finish. Okay, you already know about your surface styles and your point styles, and you're going to have all of that. Okay, point descriptions. Figure prefix library. Some of these aren't going to be found in your settings. I'm going to have to show you where some of these are. Figure prefix line, library. Line work code set. A couple that I forgot to add in there. Survey database settings, such as coordinate systems, maybe even custom coordinate systems will need to be set up. These are the things that you're going to have to pay attention to and add in to your current workflow. Then another thing that people frequently forget is what about your data collectors? Now you can plug in all of this information, your description codes, all of that good kind of stuff. You can plug all of that into Civil 3D, but it's also got to get added into your data collectors, and that's going to be a bit time consuming. I've seen some offices and some um, governmental governmental agencies where they've got upwards of 50 data collectors. They got to bring them all in, and then somebody's got to take this information and program that in. You've got to use the extra programs like the Sokia business. Uh, I think it's I can't remember what the Sokia one is. Uh, Trimble Business Center, the Sokia Desktop Center, I think it's called. Whatever software for your data collector that you're using, you're going to have to utilize that. Get the, these figure prefixes, the codes, get the point codes, get all of that plugged in there, get the extra attributes plugged in. And there's got to be a lot of communication between whoever's doing it in the office and whoever's doing it in the field. That's going to be very important. Uh, you do not want to force somebody in the field to try to do something because that's the quickest way to get them to not do it. So you, you want to have this communication. You want to have people working back and forth and coming up with something that everybody agrees to. Another reason that you've got to include this, and I've seen this happen very frequently, is that the people in the office can't think of everything. The people in the field, having been out in the field, they've seen it, they've done it, they know what they're going to run into, they know what data is important, so uh, they're the ones who really need to come up with a lot of these codes and a lot of these attributes because they've all done it before. All right, enough of the PowerPoint presentation. Let's actually have a look at what I'm talking about here. So for this today, I'm going to be using Civil 3D 2016. For those of you who are watching in today, if you do have any questions, feel free to type them in. If they're kind of a timely question, I'll try to get it answered in time. Uh, otherwise, we may have to wait until the end of the webinar to answer the questions. For those of you who are watching this afterwards, we've got a website at the end of this presentation I'll be showing you where you can email us and ask questions about this. So like I said, I'm going to be using Civil 3D 2016 latest version. So what we're going to be doing here is just to show you what a lot of people are commonly doing right now, bringing in the points and then having to do the connect the dots and what it's going to look like. Now for this, there's a couple of different ways of bringing in points. I'm not going to be doing some of the evil ways. And by what, the evil ways, one of the things I'm talking about here is in the point creation tools or in the insert is just importing points. This is one of the methods you cannot use in order to do all of this. The point creation tools, or if I go over to the insert and just choose, as you see here, points from file. These methods can't be used for automated field to finish. This will just bring the points in as what are called Togo points or live points. Now, sure, I can lock them down, but that doesn't prevent anybody from unlocking them, moving them, erasing them, messing around with them. Also, if you use one of these methods, you completely bypass the ability to do the automated line work. So you want to skip over these methods. What we're talking about here is we're talking about the survey method, and that means building up a survey database and working with all of that. So let's talk about that. In my survey tab here for Civil 3D, you'll notice that I've got my survey databases. So I've got a whole you know, two or three day class where I talk about field to finish and working with survey. We're not going to get to all of this stuff, but I'm going to hit on a couple of high points. So a quick example, let's say that surveyors went out and they, we've got some data that they collected for some existing houses. Maybe we need to be doing some work on those houses. Maybe we're going to be raising them all, combining the parcels and building one great big giant house. Not like we haven't seen that in Denver before. I actually was going to buy a house at one point and the selling point for the house said, buy this house and the house next to it, take them both down, strip the lots clean, and build your own dream home. And needless to say, I did not have the money to do that, but wow, that's a, maybe they're doing that with this. 
So what did we, what do we do here? So the first thing we need to do is we need to create a brand new survey database so I can start importing my data. So I'm going to create a brand new local survey database. I'm going to call this one project number one. And we've got a brand new survey database. Where does the survey database go? How does the program manage it? I'm going to have to ask everybody to come to class for all of that. So I've got this project number one. And it's really pretty straightforward. In order to bring in my survey data and have the whole system set up for the automated field to finish, I'm just going to go to my little import events here. I'm going to import some survey data, just like you would any other way. I'm going to pick my project. I'm going to tell the program that I want to actually bring in a point file. I'm going to select that point file. I'm going to pick my format is around here. It's a PNEZD comma delimited. And you've got your little screen down here right below that. So you can double check your points and make sure everything's going to look good as it's coming in. If you want to bring it into a survey network, you can. Uh, fortunately, in the later versions of the program, the program does allow you to specify none. Survey networks are really handy if I'm doing traversing and I want to do traverse adjustment inside of Civil 3D. These days, traversing and traverse adjustment is all done inside the data collector, so I don't need to worry about that. And then I've got things like my import options, my figure prefix database that I'm working on, and we're going to see this, this is going to become progressive. And do I want to insert the survey figures? Do I want it to do any kind of uh, line work? And I'm going to specify no for everything right now. This is the way that things are currently getting done in your office if you're not using field to finish in the automated line work. Don't know if you can see them, but the points are actually there. So I'm going to change my scale factor so I can actually see the points. Now remember, this is at the top level. This is without a, a, a AutoCAD template set up, a Civil 3D template, no styles, no settings, no figures, nothing. So this is how you're doing things at the very, very back end before you do all of the field to finish the line work connectivity code. So I'm looking at this and I can kind of make out some of this. I've got some fence posts. I don't, they don't look like posts. I've got a pool. I'm not quite certain exactly what the pool looks like. I've got some buildings here. Problem with the building, I'm pretty certain they shot more than two points on the building. So I've got some problems here and I've got a lip of gutter. I'm going to have to start drawing in some line work, using my object snaps, connecting the dots, figuring out what's going on over here. Um, I've got a building, I've got a lip of gutter, and I've got driveways, so I'm not quite certain what's going on. So not only am I going to have to start wasting time inserting blocks for things like hydrants, as you see here, or maybe light poles or manholes, I'm going to have to create my own new layers, I'm going to have to draw some things up, I'm going to have to figure out what the elevations of these things that I'm drawing are up, so maybe some 3D line work. If I draw using a 3D polyline, I'm not allowed curves with a 3D polyline. That could be a problem. I'm going to have to use figures. So as you see here, what we've got is we've got a big waste of time. I'm not the person out in the field. I don't know what was going on over here when they shot the building. I don't know what this driveway out in the middle of space means. I'm not sure what, certain what's going on. Some of these others I can try to trace around to the points and figure out what's happening. But I'm going to have to get back with the field crew. So already we're wasting time because I'm not certain what's happening. I'm going to have to get back with the field crew. I'm wasting time creating a whole bunch of brand new layers because as you see here, I don't have any layers. I don't have a template. So I'm going to have to set up a bunch of new layers. I'm going to have to insert some blocks. I'm going to have to do a lot of drawing. So basically my whole day is shot. That's it. My whole day is shot here, Lawrence. I'm, I'm, not, I'm not able to do anything except for go back and forth and do some drafting. This is not good. This is not what we want to have happen. All right. So, and then who's going to be checking the data after I've drawn it? So, our next step, or our first step really, is to make sure that you've got a Civil 3D template set up. And with a Civil 3D template set up, we've got things like all of our layers, all of our survey layers, all of our civil engineering layers already preset for us, which is awesome. I go into my settings tab. We've got our point styles set up already. So I can insert my symbols. 
So my point styles are set up. That's critically important. As I was mentioning before, I've got description keys that I need to set up. And the description keys are what I'm going to be working with the surveyors on. These are going to be the codes that they're going to be using out in the field and any extra attributes. Now, the cool thing with description keys are when we're talking about symbology. So when somebody brings in something like a hydrant, a fence post, or a light pole, or a manhole, what type of symbol do I want it to insert? What layers do I want it to use? What type of scaling do I want it to use? This is all automated when we build our description key sets. Now you're also going to notice that I've got multiple description key sets here. I could have one for that's just a general office description key set, and then maybe I've got a couple of different field crews, and each field crew is just a little bit different with how they may code things. Who knows? You know, that, uh, maybe I'm working with a different, uh, different field crew from a different office or something. So I can have multiple description key sets. The program's going to read them basically from top down. I can control the order that they're in and how the program reads them. But it's going to read them from top down and, and hopefully uh, pick up everything that everybody's giving me. All right, what other kinds of uh, styles and settings and things like that do we need? Well, if I come down here, if I scroll down onto my uh, settings tab and I come to the survey settings, you're going to notice that I've got figure styles. And the figure styles can control which figures that I'm using, the layers, whether or not they're coming in 2D or 3D, uh, which doesn't matter when I'm building a surface. So basically how my line work is going to look. I can control that here with different figure styles, or I can control that through layers, or I can control that through figure prefix, or all of the same thing. Now, one of the questions that we get very frequently is people are looking at this going, well, here's survey, and here's figure, but where are my figure prefixes that Warren was talking about? Where's my line work codes that Warren was talking about? Those are going to be in the survey tab for Civil 3D. As opposed to virtually everything else that Civil 3D works with, where Civil 3D builds layers, styles, settings inside your drawing template, these two features are stored outside of your drawing template. You need to be aware of that. Because if you wind up working with this system and you create figure prefix databases or line work code sets, these are external databases to the program. Now we can point to where these databases are. We can have all of that information plugged into our particular project that we're building. But we need to be aware that if I build these, I've got to put them up on the server and have everybody point to them through their, uh, through their survey settings. Figure prefix databases. Okay, you get to control which one that you're working with at any one time and which figures come in. Now, figure prefixes are very similar to what I was just talking about with the description keys. They're just codes that the surveyor is going to add in in the field. The difference is, is that if that particular code... As you see up here, if that particular code is shot out in the field and that code is pulled in via the points, the program will not only put a symbol where necessary. I've got a symbol for fence post, by the way, where it's going to bring in what looks like a fence post, but the program's going to connect the dots for me. So it's a combination between the description keys and the figure prefix database. The, cool, the other cool thing, so we've, we've got line work already preset. The program's recognizing that the line work, the program's recognizing what layer it's going on, and or the style. Now, in this particular case, I'm having it put it on a particular layer, and I'm not using a layer for the style. You can use one, you can use the other. If, for whatever reason you want, you can use them both, and a figure can go on multiple layers. That would just get confusing, though. So I'm using layer zero for my style, style standard, and I'm controlling the layers right here. So I'm drawing line work. This is going to be 3D line work that I can plug into a surface. It's going to draw it all up automatically. Now, wait a minute. When I'm drawing up line work, I don't want it all to go to a surface. Well, that's cool. Right here, I can set which types of line work, based on the code, is going to go into the surface, whether or not it's going to be a break line that will automatically go into the surface. I can also control whether or not this is going to be a lot line, so it'll create parcels for me on the fly if I want it to. You can do that as well. So this is the other setting that's very, very important that people need to pay attention to and work with the surveyors. This is the meat of field to finish right here, everybody. It's got it right here, figure prefix database. The database is controlled and stored outside of the drawing. If I pick it and I hover over it, it's going to tell me where they are, what the names are. You control these settings 
through your survey database settings. And I'm going to go ahead and open up this survey database. And I'm going to edit the survey database settings. And inside the survey database settings throughout here and during our import settings, etc., this is where we can control things like the units that we're using, the um, uh, coordinate systems that we're using, etc. But that's where we're going to be able to point to those figure prefix databases. Also, our line work code sets. Again, stored outside the drawing. You can control where those are. You can put them all up on the server, have everybody point to the server. The line work code sets control that the, the codes that are entered in via attributes. So let's say that the surveyor goes out there and shoots a lipid gutter or a curb or something else and he wants to draw a curve, he wants to draw he wants to start drawing, he wants to end drawing, he wants to do offsets. These are all the codes that you will use for all of those. These are all editable. So if you don't like the codes you can go ahead and edit them. But these would be entered in as attributes in the field. So as an example, if a surveyor goes out there and shoots flow line FL and he wants it to have a code to begin the flow line, he can put in a B for one of his attributes. The program's going to read that as a line work code and it's going to automatically start beginning the line work. These are all entered in as attributes. Okay, so now that I've got my survey database set up, I've got my template set up, I've got some of my figure prefixes set up, Maybe not all of them. We'll take a look at that. Let's take a look at some of the importing that we can now do. So I'm going to go back to importing some survey data. And I'm going to pick our next point file. Now the next point file, the difference between them is the first point file did not have all the codes entered in correctly because they weren't thinking of line work. So the second point file, if I open this guy up for editing so that you can see what's going on here, so we've just got a PNEZD, point number, northern, easting, elevation, description, comma, delimited, point file. Pretty straightforward. But now the difference is, is that where I've got my uh, codes shot for the field, I've also got line work codes in here, like begin, begin curve, end curve, all of those codes that I was just showing you in the line work code set. So I've now got all of those plugged in to this. So let's take a look at what happens when I'm going to bring all of those in. Again, choosing the appropriate format, specifying the network if necessary. Now we've got to take a look at some of these options inside here. Which figure prefix database am I using if you've got more than one? Do you want to process the line work during import? Yes, you do. I do want it to draw a line work. Which line work code set do you want to use? You get to choose them if you've got more than one. Okay. Do I want to insert the figures? Do I want to insert the, the points? You get to specify all of that. And I'll go ahead and hit finish. And now we're starting to see some enhancements in here. First enhancement you're seeing is, is that the line work all got drawn. Uh, that's huge, everybody. This is huge. These, this line work came in as a survey figure. And as a survey figure, it's got 3D elevations, and they get to be get entered into my surface as brake lines. You're also seeing that for some of these points, I've got um, symbology for some of the points, like fence posts. If I come down here, I've got a hydrant in here. So I'm not inserting any of that information. Okay, this is not complete yet. I'm going to talk about making some changes and some other things that we have to do. But you see where we're gradually making the step-by-step -step process. I've got my lipid gutter. Now, a couple things that I want to bring to everybody's attention, some things that people didn't know about Civil 3D. If you're used to using old LAN desktop or the old soft desk, or heaven help you if you go back far enough, if you remember like me, the old DCA, here's something that we could never do before. Here I have a figure hovering over it. Its name is LOG. That's lip of gutter. But you're going to notice that here I've got a lip of gutter, and right next to it is I've got another code. Something that's relatively new in the program is, is we can now double code points. So right here, where I'm continuing the lip of gutter going this way, I'm also starting driveway one. I'm going to, whoops, driveway one. And actually, I'm going driveway one from here to here. And then I'm going driveway one from there to there. So it's going to generate the driveway for me. Because driveways are just as important. Maybe they need to go on a different layer, etc. But this is also a figure that I need to worry about. Now, you're also going to notice some other coding that I've got in here. I've got building. I'm beginning a building. I've got driveway one in here. 
So I'm shooting around in a circle from my building and my driveway. So here's what happened when the surveyor went out there and they shot a couple of points. They just shot two points and they used some special line work codes called right offsets or right turns where maybe there was a fence here, maybe it was a private property and they just may, may not have been able to survey it. There was an overhang something. So they either paced it off or they did some estimates based on a uh, aerial photograph or something. So they're saying, I'm turning right 12 feet, and then I'm turning left, and I'm turning right, etc. And obviously there was an error in here. So what do you do? Well, it's really pretty straightforward. All they need to do is they need to go in and take a look at the file that was used. So I'm going into my properties. I'm able to pick that file that was already used, and I can go in and make some text edits. I can do things like fix those right turns. I can start doing things like adding offsets for the curving gutter. This is where the surveyor is going to be doing the work. The surveyor is going to be in the office. They're going to be making these edits. They can do some manual things. And then after they've made these edits, well, heck, all they've got to do is come right back here and just say re-import after they've made the edits. And they get to see the changes. And it's back and forth, back and forth, very, very quick. So this shouldn't take a long time. Things that can be added, offsets for curving gutter. Okay, as you see here, I'm beginning a curve. I've got codes. Oh, I forgot to add in the close code. Um, oh, I used the wrong code. I used house instead of building, or maybe the other ones were supposed to be houses instead of buildings. So these are all things that the surveyor can see up front and can make the changes for very quickly and easily. So what happens when they make those changes? I'm going to go ahead and remove this guy from the drawing and delete it. And I'm going to import number three. And this is after the surveyor has made some changes. Now, as I'm mentioning, I've got kind of a staged data set for purposes of a demonstration. But when we teach this in class, we're only ever working off of one text file. So as I showed you a minute ago, the surveyor would get in, make the edits to the text file, re-import it, take a look, go back and forth, back and forth. And it doesn't take that long. It's really a, a very straightforward and quick process. I've got all of the same things taken care of. I'm going to go ahead and finish this generated all the line work. As you see here, okay, it fixed my building. I've got my closes. My driveways are looking good. I've got some offsets here for curb and gutter, all right, and a sidewalk. Now, you'll notice that the offsets don't necessarily perfectly work with real world. Okay, I'll be quite honest with you. This is where I would feel comfortable passing it off to a, a tech in the office. This is easy. This is things like trimming lines and extending lines and fixing figures just to be able to take care of it. This is really easy stuff. But wait a minute. All of my line work didn't come in on the appropriate layers, and that's because I did not have the appropriate survey database set or the figure prefix database set. Maybe not the right line work code set taken care of. Maybe not the right description keys taken care of. So again, these are things that I can make changes to very quickly. Look at this going, oh, I forgot, I forgot my layers. Choose re-import. Okay, and I'm just going to overwrite all of my points. And whoops, bring that data in. And I did say make current. Oh, whoops. I forgot something. All right, so easy enough. Re-import. I uh, got the line work code set. I did say make current. Tag nab it. It keeps resetting it back to the other one. Okay, so one more time very quickly for everybody. And I'm hoping that that won't do it again. Oh, whoops, that's why. This is what happens when you start getting too carried away with the demo and going too fast. Even though I set it to make current, I've got to tell the program which one of those figure prefix databases I'm using. Sorry about that. Now I'm going to say OK. There we go. All the line work is drawn. All the line work is drawn on appropriate layers using appropriate line types. As I mentioned before, if I've got some, a few little drafting errors that, that I need to take care of, I can get those fixed. So we started off with no layers, just points coming in. 
and you saw how long that was going to take. I mean, realistically, that could have taken me all day to draw up this line work, but with the proper layers, with the proper line work codes being used in the field, figure prefixes, the amount of editing and drafting done in the office should be really negligible. I mean, at this point, I can turn off the points that I don't want to use, leave some of the symbols on. I can do this on a layer-by-layer -layer basis. And now the next few things that I'm going to be talking about is, is you know, taking it to the next step, creating surfaces, etc. But you see, with just a little bit of setup, with just a little bit of work in the field, I can go ahead and take care of all of this. Do we have a question, Lawrence? I saw that. Uh, we do. We have someone uh, asked about the description key files. Is there a way that they're can be used uh, by other applications, this is like LAN desktop, etc. The description key files, is there a way that they can be used by other applications? Uh, sort of. And by that I mean, when you, if you go to your output and you export your information uh, to LAN XML, and, no, wait a minute. No, it wasn't a LAN XML. It was, that's what it was. <laughs> It was a uh, third-party app I remember playing with. Description key files can, or description keys can be exported. It's not inside the program. There is a separate app for that, and it, and it may have wound up in the productivity pack. I'm trying to remember where I saw this one. Um, some utilities, maybe not. There was, um, it may have been an app that I saw, but I do remember seeing a tool set outside of Civil 3D for exporting your description keys. And I think I would export it into a Excel spreadsheet or a CSV file where you could do some edits. You could import them into other applications like your data collection software. And then you, if you needed to make any changes, you'd made the changes and then do a re-import. Um, now that I'm thinking about it, I'm almost positive it was an app. And then how about the reverse where you may have a surveyor using LAN desktop and you need to bring in their description keys into Civil? Yeah, kind of the same thing. You'd need to you'd need to use that app for being able to uh, uh, read that information and go back and forth with it. As I was mentioning, if I remember how that app worked, and it's been several months since I remember looking at it, I remember pulling it up for a survey class. But it would do an export and import for the cert, for the description keys. So that's how you would use that uh, that data. Now for the other ones, for the line work code sets, this is, as I mentioned, a database. And for the figure prefix, this is a database. This is an external database. Um, if memory serves, and I'm pretty sure I remember this correctly, these are the figure databases are in kind of an access database format so that you can give them to somebody and have them open it up and access and do things with them. But I'll be quite honest, by the time you get done messing around with the figure prefix databases and everything else, Honestly, it's just easier to have somebody recreate them. It really is. Now, description keys, the point codes, no. That, that's, I've seen some point code lists. Um, Brian Haley in our office, our, our civil 3D instructor, he and I we had worked on a couple projects. We saw some description key lists that were astronomical. They were probably 10, 12 pages in length. So you don't want to do that manually. Okay, so moving along about, you know, talking about the whole field to finish process. So as you saw here, by using some of the survey settings and some of the survey tool sets, I'm able to have the surveyor come in, create a survey database to a quick right click, bring in their information, and then through some quick right clicks, you know, going back and forth to the file so that I could see my points, um, come in, whoops, there it is, come in, make some changes, close that, re-import the points, back and forth, back and forth, you can clean up the data. When we were doing this uh, in our office many, many years ago, and this was back in the soft desk days of all things, when we were doing this, honest, honestly, it didn't take the server more than about 15 minutes to have a completed ALTA just about without you know, labeling and things and maybe a little bit of cleanup, but it only took them about 15 minutes to have all of this built up. So if it's done correctly, what other kinds of things can we do? So I've got my line work, I've got all of that, well, for those of you who are the CAD managers who are setting these things up in the field, we've also got point groups. And point groups are very important because they can control the visibility of my points, the visibility of the, um, the labels, which points that I want to see. But also, point groups are critically important for building surfaces. So I've got a preset point group. And you can put that in your drawing template 
for your existing surfaces. So I'm going to update that point group. And a surface is automatically built. Well, heck, how did I do that? Well, in your template, you have a pre-built surface. And in that pre-built surface, you've already told the program which point group that you want to use. This can already be preset. You want to talk about automating this process? This is really a great way of automating the process. You have a pre-built surface using a pre-built point group. You refresh the point group, and it's almost done. Now, almost. What's missing? Well, my figures, all my line work, you know, all my, all my line breaks and all of that. Easy enough for the surveyor to take care of. All they've got to do is come back in here. They right-click their figures, and they say, hey, I want to create break lines from those figures. Now, which break lines is it already? It's already flagged those break lines based on the figure prefix database. So it knows which one I want to use. And I've got the opportunity here to say, ah, I changed my mind. I don't want to use this one, or I want to add that one, and I can check it in. Which surface is it using? Well, I've already pre-built the surface. So it's already preset. If you really want to see where this is going to work, you want to focus down here by the curbing gutter and all of that. Because what you're going to notice is, is that I've got a six inch curb head in between the driveways and it's ending at the driveway. So I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, it's going to build them as standard brake lines. Hit okay. And now you're noticing some pretty remarkable changes of how it's going up and down the curb head and how it may stop. Now, as I mentioned, I may need to make some drafting changes. You know, this, this could be really easy. I've got some crossing brake lines here. I may need to do a little bit of shifting so that my uh, sidewalks and things like that are taken care of. But that's something that can be done in the office. That's something that can be done really pretty quickly and easily. Other things, you can have the surveyor do this, or you can do this kind of thing in the office. But when I come back to my surface, well, quite obviously, there are some things that I don't want to see. I don't want to see the buildings in the pool with the surface running through them because I have absolutely no idea. So very easy for anybody to do. I want some hide boundaries. And I'm just going to run through. You can do this in the office. You can have the surveyors do this. Maybe I'll pick the pool and I'll pick the buildings. And there we go. We get some hide boundaries. So as you're seeing here, through just an extra couple of steps, surveyors cleaning up the data, making sure that it looks good before they pass it off. They're making sure everything's set up, and I've got an existing ground conditions plan. What other things can we throw in there? Well, very quickly, in case you didn't know, Civil 3D is built on top of Autodesk Map 3D, which is our GIS collection and, and uh, connection tool. So if you contact your state, your city, your county, your local municipality, you're liable to be able to get a whole bunch of GIS data for free. I love that word, for mm -hmm. free. Things like parcel information, roadway information, utility information, you can usually download a lot of this right off their website for free. So here we've downloaded some property information. And I've got some properties in there that I'm seeing. Now maybe I don't like the way that they look. And again, we show this a little bit in, in a lot of our different classes of how I can go in here, change the style, say, you know what, I don't want it to have a fill, and I want my parcels to be a nice red outline only takes a few minutes. I'm really starting to clean this data up so that I can pass it off. So there's my existing parcel uh, line work or my existing uh, property lines. And double check that. Now again, it's GIS data, so you take that for what it's worth. And then last but not least, if you're using 2014 through 16, and I hesitate, 2014, you can't print this. So you really want 2015 or 2016 to be able to get what I'm about to show you. Because another thing that you can, you can go online, you can go to the USGS website, you can download these aerial images, and they're not that great resolution. But if you all are using 2015 or 2016 and you sign up with an Autodesk 360 account, which is free, nobody's going to charge you for it, you get yourself an Autodesk 360 account, you're using AutoCAD software, you've applied a coordinate system to your drawing, then you get this really cool geolocation tab. And with that geolocation tab, I can come in and I get free aerial imagery from Bing Maps. Using some of the tool sets inside here, what I can do is I can capture a particular area and then I can print that particular captured area. How's that look? Now I can see where those buildings are. I can actually see the pool in the backyard and in there, see where the driveways are, maybe make a little cleanup if I want to or if I'm worried about it. But I, this is pretty good resolution imagery right here, let me tell you. If you were to take a look at some of the USGS 
imagery, you're going to notice it maybe have one or two meter resolution. It's not all that great. Now, for those of you in the Denver metro area, it may not be as good as some of the Dr. Cog aerial imagery that you'd have to pay for. Dr. Cog, you can get, I think, down to two inch resolution, which is really nice, but you're paying for it. This is free. All I got to do is just give it a coordinate system and tell the program I want to see it. There we go. So even with me talking and going through this, once you get your people trained, once you get them to understand you know, that they may need to make a couple of adjustments on collecting data or some of their points, you get all of this set up in the office. And it does require some setup time. These are the kinds of things we teach you to do here at CAD One, or we can even help you. We've, we've helped many companies set up their workflow and all of the files that they need in order to use and given them the process in order to migrate those forward. So we can help you set that up. Once you've got these settings taken care of, somebody comes in out of the field, they drop their points out of their data collector and do all of their adjustments from the data collector, they throw them in here, and then they just go back and forth and make a couple of tweaks and edits, and before you know it, I've got all of this data. I can throw in some GIS information, the aerial photogrammetry. I can pass this off to just about anybody. I can pass it off to an engineering tech, a surveyor tech, pass it off to anybody to be able to use. So on that, that's what Field to Finish is. That's what Field to Finish can do for you. The time savings, the error adjustment that needs to be done. I'll give everybody a minute or two to think about any questions, last minute questions that you'd like to ask while you're thinking of them. And we're wrapping up here. We don't want to go over because it's snowing very heavily. We want to make sure everybody gets home safe. But don't forget that we are available, we are on Facebook and Twitter, so you can come up to our Facebook page and like us. Uh, for Civil 3D, Brian Haley, our professional engineer registered in the state of Colorado, who is our uh, premier instructor. He's also an expert elite for Autodesk. If you want to know anything about Civil 3D, including what you saw here today, take a look at his, his weblog uh, right there, Civil 3D Plus at WordPress. He's got a lot of really great tips and tricks. Uh, Brian also hosts the Civil Chat, which is a non-recorded Carfax question and answer session once a month here. So you definitely want to take a look at that. Where do you find information for that? Well, let me shoot up ahead here. If you come up to our website, look at the CAD One events portion of our website, you'll see webinars. You'll see webinar archives you can go to. We've got our own YouTube page. This webinar will be posted uh, within about a week or two up on our webinar archives or our YouTube page. Now, one of the things I'll back up and one of the things that I did want to mention again is don't forget that we've got training. We can teach you how to do all of the things that I showed you how to do here today. We can teach, we can work with your CAD management staff and your office staff on doing the setup. So we can do the mentoring, we can help you do the setup and the implementation. We can teach you how to modify that setup. We can work with the survey crews on, on training them on doing all of this. They don't need to learn a lot of AutoCAD and a lot of Civil 3D. They don't need to learn how to do design. Our Civil 3D field to finish class is only a few days in length. And during that time, we try to teach surveyors everything that I showed you here. Not only that, but how to do all of the setup and how to work with surfaces and some GIS data and get all of that just as I showed it to you passed off. So if you need any of that, if you need the training, then please do contact us. And then for those of you watching this webinar after the fact, if you do have questions or if you want more information after today about the webinar or any of the contents of the webinar, if you want to get in touch with us, then please email us at info at cad-one.com or you can give us a call at our office at 303-427-2231. Are there any questions, Lawrence? Oh, no, nope, that is it. That is it. So if there are no questions, then please, if you do think of any, then please contact us later. And I'd like to thank you all very much, and thank Lawrence for sitting in here and listening to me drone on and on for an hour. But I want to thank everybody who could make it out today very much. For those of you who are in the Denver metro area, I want to give you an especially warm thank you for joining us because we are buried under about 6 to 10 inches of snow. So uh, you all be very safe out there. And for those of you who are uh, east of us, and today is December 15th, 2015, for those of you who are east of us, you want to keep your head down because it's heading towards you. So thank you very much, everybody, for joining us. 
and come up to our webinar channel and see uh, register for more webinars if you like the one that you visited here today.